Hi guys, welcome to Table Talk. I'm Castle. I'm Carol. So looking up online, there are several articles that talks about. Um, they have titles varying from six ways social media can negatively affect your mental health, or things like the evidence of how social media is bad for you, and so on. But is social media really bad for you? Um, that's a <laughs> that's a question that I guess we don't know, right? Yeah. <laughs> But a month ago, Selena Gomez, with 144 million followers, posted on on her social media saying that. She is grateful for the voice that she's given on this platform, and、um, quote that social media gives each of us. And but she is gonna take a break, and、uh, you know, to sit back and yeah, to reflect on her health, and you know, to focus on her health. Yeah.、Um, and this was her last post since, and that was a month ago, September twenty third,、uh, as you can see below. And then two weeks later, on October 11, she was hospitalized. A source told CNN that it is due to complications from her kidney transplant, and that Gomez is committed to focusing on health.、Um, she said to CNN that, "quote I've discovered that anxiety, panic, panic attacks, and depression can be a side effect of lupus, which can present their own challenges. I want to be proactive and focus on maintaining my health and happiness, and have decided that the best way forward." Is to take some time off. Time off the social media. Yeah,、or? on Instagram. Like she hasn't been posting for a month now.、Mm -hmm. This actually reminds me of、uh, the a number of other celebrities who has at some point in their life taken time off or like deleted their Instagram and then coming back again, stop posting on Twitter for a bit. And we do. Do you know Pete Davidson? Yes. Yeah. Ariana Grande's fiance. He deleted his、um, Instagram. It's no longer on Instagram. I don't Instagram think. I don't、right、think、now. they are still together. Yeah, they're not together anymore. This is just yeah, a crazy it's story、gone. itself.、Yep. It's over. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Sadly, <laughs> that, that but is, that is so crazy. Yeah. yeah. So he he's not on Instagram anymore, and celebrities like Justin Bieber, at some point he actually declared that Instagram is for the devil. Devil. <laughs> yeah. At a November 2016 concert, and like Rihanna, Ed Sheeran, has all、uh, in the past took a break. Yeah. And it may be due to negativity or like they said sleep deprivation or exhaustion. So like, do you see the connection? Like the, how they said they are tired and like I want to break off social media. Yeah, I mean I think it's pretty relatable actually.、Um, I mean there are celebrities. I'm sure the the dopamine they get from you know the likes、yeah. and all the attention from、mm. Instagram is a lot greater than ours because we only、yeah. have what yeah like, like、uh, a few, <laughs> few yeah, I, yeah I think the most like a hundred likes、mm -hmm. which is like really relevant compared to、mm -hmm. them. But still,、um, me myself, I do find myself spending more than more time on Instagram、mm -hmm. and other social media platform than like.、Yeah. And a lot of times, after scrolling for for an hour, you realize you're not really doing anything constructive. And、yeah. the clips are watching; they're not educational. They don't really do anything for you. A lot of times, just like pictures of random people、mm -hmm. you don't even talk to、mm -hmm. for years,、mm -hmm. or、um, cute cats and dog video, which、yeah. which is you know a nice break from, I guess, all the attention that、um, uh, I mean things that you should be paying attention to.、Mm -hmm. So. In terms of, do I find、uh, social media and uh, uh, these platform to be addictive、mm -hmm. and bad for you? I think I do find myself wasting a lot of time、mm -hmm. on these social media platform.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you think that?、Um, let's touch on a little about our personal experience with social media. How do you think, like for you, it has affect maybe on your sleep or like your self esteem or? Um, having anxieties, do you have? Do you see any signs, or like, do you have you ever felt that way after, like you say, you felt like you waste a lot of time on social media,、yeah. watching videos that is meaningless? Yeah.、Um, in terms of sleep, I can't sleep anywhere, so that doesn't really <laughs> affect my sleep. Yeah. But sometimes, if you wake up in the middle of the night,、mm. like I, I just for some reason, I just go to my phone and、yeah. I, I check like Facebook or Instagram、yeah. for no reason. There's、mm -hmm. no reason I should be wanting to. Be on your phone. All yeah, right. like I, I should just go back to sleep, or I should just go on with my、um, like regular schedule. But、mm -hmm. instead, I want that break.、Mm -hmm. I, I feel like for myself, I kind of interpret it as a smoking break. Wow, for, that's, I, that's, that's a great I, analogy. That, that's how I feel. I, I mean,、wow. myself, I don't smoke, but for、mm -hmm. uh, my friends who smoke, for them. Uh, a lot of times, if things get stressful, they want to step outside and have、mm. a break. Not necessarily they want 
to smoke, but the action of smoking is for them is a break from everything. Wow. It's a it's a moment they can have with themselves and just mm -hmm. that that cigarette, right? And I think for people who don't smoke and for this our, our generations of people. I think Instagram and social media platform is kind of like our smoking break. Mm. Like sometimes when you're so busy, for some reason you just want to grab your phone yeah. and like look at Instagram. Yeah. It's like a it's like, like a <gasps> mental break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that for me, uh, it, it, it yeah, I serve the purpose as a break. Mm. Uh, it doesn't really disrupt my sleeping pattern, but yeah. <laughs> it, it does. So you think like it doesn't affect your. Mental health, or like you feel like you're more anxious, or like none of that. I think I think mental health, because uh, I'm not a professional, so yeah. I can't I can't really say if it's affecting my mental health. Mm. Um, self esteem wise, I think we all experienced that when social media started mm. to become more, uh, I guess, like the presence start to be uh, bigger, right? Mm. You see other people living their lives and yeah. uh, how everyone just posting happy things right. and everyone is trying to. If you have money, you flex it on yeah. social media. You want to show the good side, right? Yeah. No one's really showing the negative side. Mm. Um, so yes, at one point you feel like your your life is so much worse than everyone else's. Mm. That you compare your behind the scenes with someone's high highlight reels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, and then uh, so yeah, I think at one point you do feel pretty bad about your life. You feel like such a loser because you're not really <laughs> doing anything cool like yeah. other people are posting on their Instagram wow. or Facebook, right? But yeah. then I think after after a few years, you grew you kinda, out of it. You, you yeah, adapt. yeah. I think we kind of all realize it's it's not really the reality. It's uh, sometimes it's a little. It's just like a show that people put on. I'm sure yeah. we all do that yeah. for show other people how how great our lives are. When yeah. reality, uh, maybe not necessarily. So I think at one point yes, but now it's getting better. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Um, for me, I actually feel anxious and like. Uh, this survey kind of like confirms my anxiety or whatever. I I don't know what was anxiety. I hear a lot of people like, oh, I, I have anxiety. But at first, I'm like, what's anxiety? Like, I've mm -hmm. never felt that way. But recently, maybe I would say for the past six months, I think I felt it with like, uh, coming, uh, just uh, uh, graduating a year ago and coming into work and like social media and how, uh, as a reporter or like a journalist, you you have to go to the media to absorb and know things and you know. Uh, keep yourself uh, in the loop, yeah. And um, I think one thing that social media is really good is like you, you, you know what's the latest trend and like what's hot. Like you could be on social media on Instagram and following CNN, and then they ha they bring you the breaking news and things like that. So for me, uh, if I think yeah, it actually gives me anxiety mm. if I use it in a way that oh I want to see what people are doing or I want to uh, flex my friends or things like that. But if I use it to be in touch with like my friends or family. Then I feel good. But I actually went on a social media break for a week, about mm. two weeks ago, and I felt so good because I want to see if really there's a difference. Right. Because I feel like what you said, like you, it's like a sick break. You just take it out. You're so busy, but you take your phone up and see, look at it for like five minutes. But it's like, oh, it's like, oh, I feel relief. But yeah. for me, not really. I feel relief at that moment. But after I use it, I'm like, I don't feel that. Great, like yeah. I always have to think about uh, fearing FOMO or, or like if people are liking my pictures. But for that one week without using, actually I only deactivated Instagram. Like I was still leaving my Facebook on because who really uses Facebook anymore? Older <laughs> <laughs> people. Yeah, Facebook is not a big thing for me, but Instagram is. It's like right. it's so good with the pictures. You know, you are not yeah. like all oh, status and like videos, but it's all just pictures and like short clips, and. But in that one week, I feel so much more focused. Mm. Like my my attention span is so much better. Not like oh, I'm doing this and I'm thinking about oh, if this person is liking my picture or like if this uh yeah. So I feel so much more focused and so clean and like I have some air to breathe. I think. But how did you like when you started? Was it hard? It was hard. I'm like, I was actually our coworker. I was like, can I look at your phone and look at Instagram? He's like, no, you are having your break. I'm like, oh, okay. Because I felt as long as it's not on my phone, like, am I using somebody else's phone? It's like that would be okay. But yeah, but I feel it was so good. It's I feel so much more focused at work or spending time with my friend or with my family. I'm not like constantly checking on Instagram, like, oh, who's doing what and who's liking my picture. So I think for that one week break, I I feel so good. 
Right. So, yeah. so do do you feel like you need to go back to Instagram? Uh, can can you just have this bread forever? I think forever? I can. I think I can live without it. But okay. I, I need it because I think I want to be in the loop. I right. want to know, hey, what's new? Like, what are my friends wearing? Like, what's what's popping? And you know, what's what's hot right now? Like, so so that's why if you use social media for you know to keep in touch with your friends and not like, oh, who's liking me a picture? That will be better because uh, there's actually a professor from the University of Missouri. She said that, ah, uh, where is it? I knew it was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she said that face. Uh, she she took Facebook instead of Instagram. She said Facebook can be a fun and healthy activity if users take advantage of the site to stay connected with family and old friends, instead of seeing how well an acquaintance is doing financially or how happy a person is with his boyfriend or girlfriend. You know, things that cause envy among users then. The site can lead to feelings of depression. I right. think that's that's so so well said. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess if it's your loved ones or yeah. your close friends, you don't really like them showing they're doing well. It's not yeah. gonna make you feel bad. Yeah, I think uh, social media is a game of comparison, right? So that's why, like, how I so I always wonder, like, why do celebrities quit social media? Or as our title said, Instagram, like, they're so famous. They have like what I don't know, millions of lights, and yeah. they use like Selena Gomez as this platform as a voice to amplify their, uh, for example, the Me Too movement or whatever they are believing in or to raise awareness in other countries and things like that. But maybe sometimes we just lose control and that's why celebrities always take a break off to focus on their health. Yeah, and we, uh, in our previous, I mean, uh, earlier episodes, sometimes mm -hmm. we cover uh, sad stories of celebrities. A yeah. lot of them just can't. Yeah. I think sometimes uh, just can take the pressure, yeah. uh, especially in a platform that has so many people watching. Yeah. I'm sure the pressure uh, is on. Yeah, the, the greater the, the pleasure, I'm sure the greater the pressure yeah. is too. Okay. So yeah, I can understand why they take a break. I mean, I would like to too, but <laughs> it's just really hard. It's like, I, I really do think it's addictive and it becomes part of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, if you give me 15 minutes of yeah. break, of doing not, then take my phone away. Yeah. Like, I think when I was younger, I'll be able to just oh, think about like a fictional story in my yeah. head and I'll be happy. But now I'm just yeah. like, oh my God, what do I do with my phone? It's also because like, if you have, uh, I'm just gonna speak, uh, say Instagram because I use it so much. Like yeah. I don't even post on Facebook anymore. Yeah. And like, if I, oh, that's a cute kitten by the roadside. I'm like, oh, it's so cute. But if you have your, I, if I, I speak for myself, Instagram, I'm like, I'm going to post about this cute kitten on my Instagram. So I feel like I'm not really being present in the moment. Mm. And after I post that cute kitten on Instagram, it's like, oh, how many people has actually watched my story? So yeah. for me, it's like, uh. but maybe it's not like that for you or for anybody, you know? So that break really, yeah, give me a breather. I think, I think one, like this one moment I realized very vividly was um, one, one day I was walking down the street with my friend and mm -hmm. it was snowy, so it was mm -hmm. really slippery. And a group of young girls, they were yeah. walking in front of us and one girl slipped. And oh, then wow. all of them were like laughing and instead yeah. of like helping her up, they yeah. all took out their phone to yeah. record that. Wow. So I think that, is just, that just shows you how uh, social media- Has changed. This, yeah, uh, has, has changed the way people, people interact. Because yeah. when, when things happen, instead of um, giving a helping hand, you wanted to record that and yeah. get attention from your social media platform. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think we can say it's good or bad. It just, it's very different uh, yeah. the way that we interact through social media. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, I went to a fun fair uh, just down here in Long Island, and a bunch there's a lot of kids, you know, like fun fair with all those like Ferris wheel and movable things and like popcorns, no popcorns, yes, but <laughs> but a lot of like teenagers, I would say between the age of uh, thirteen to eighteen, and there's a fight going on, and oh. we were me and my friends, we were standing away, and like the fight gone in like three seconds, everybody was pulling up their phone. So you can see a bunch of like, ah, like all the phones were up in the air. Wow. It's just like, wow, it, it mess. I was so mesmerized. Yeah. yeah so mesmerized. Yeah. But I think, I think if we were to see, so if I were to see you fall in front of me, right? Yeah. I probably would like, record first and then I, I'm like, pick me up. Yeah, I would like to record you first. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like that's cool, right? But it's it's more like this a funny thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it varies on different situations. Yeah. But actually, in March, uh, there's a report that said that a third of generation uh, Generation Z 
uh, that surveyed 1,000 individuals stated that they are quitting social media for good, as 41% of them said that social media platforms make them feel anxious, uh, anxious sad, or depressed. So it's, it's, it's a real thing. But um, what I want to touch on is that there's actually a study published in the Len uh, Lancet Psychiatry found that people who, like you were saying, when you're sleeping and you wake up to check your phone instead of like falling back asleep, they said that the people who spend the night checking social media are more likely to suffer from mood problems such as bipolar disorder. I think that's a little too, <laughs> I don't know, that's a little too uh, over the board. But, and they actually rate themselves as less happy and more lonely. And this data is actually gathered from 91,000 middle-aged people. And they said that people, these people with poor sleep hygiene, such as checking Facebook late night, they got that their happiness is as 9% lower than those who had good sleep hygiene. Good sleep hygiene, that's yeah. such an interesting term. I've never heard that. Yeah, I know, right? So yeah. I think it really, because they said it's like maybe the, the, the light, Mm -hmm. from your phone and the, mm, uh, I can see that yeah. yeah and like for now for I've I've known that the first thing I wake up is checking my phone yeah and I stopped doing that in this past few days I just get recently I just became more aware about my your personal my phone mental, habits mental hygiene yeah, my, my phone habits I actually leave it outside the room so the first thing I wake up is not to look at my phone but mm -hmm. I'm going to like oh maybe lay in bed and think about my day or like just okay take a step to stretch or whatever before starting your day. Instead of like waking up like, oh, who's, who texted me like, um, who liked what, my post? Yeah, who, who, what is this person saying in this WhatsApp group? Yeah. You know, that's not the first thing I want to uh, feed my brain with first thing in the morning. Right, when right. you're like grouchy and all you want to do is sleep. But for me, it's hard for me to not, not start my day with my phone because, mm. you know, like nowadays, phone does a lot of things for you. And for yeah. me, my phone is also my alarm clock. Yeah. And then I have like maybe 10 snooze. <laughs> Oh wow! So like every every morning is a it's a battle with my phone trying yeah. to wake up and fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would I would like to not start my day with my yeah, phone. You should try that. Like buy an alarm clock for like nine dollars and let's who, go back who to still, the always. Who still use alarm clocks? I think that nowadays. will change. Actually, we should take this challenge, right? Like leave our phone outside and set our alarm clock in actually a real clock. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what we can do? We should get go get that Amazon clock. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, and everything's then, so tech right now. <laughs> and then just like yeah, just tell your tell your alarm clock gonna wake yeah. up like six thirty. Wake yeah, me except up. Except it's a little more expensive. It is, and you do have to have a Amazon dock, which is gonna cost you a little bit more too. No, but yeah, back to what we, you were saying. Like most people, you know, when they post online, they post their highlight reels. That's why um, you keep. That's the comparison game and that causes, I'm not sure if that causes depression, but I think that causes a feeling that's not nice, you know, when you like, yeah. oh, see, see people are living better than you and you compare your behind the scenes with someone's highlight reels. Yeah, yeah. So I think it just, but, but I also feel like we're getting smarter with that. Mm -hmm. We know that it's, it's not necessarily real. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really the reality of, of those people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I think gradually, mentally, we are starting to build this, uh, not necessarily immune system, but we're getting more and more mentally, I think, stronger and more aware, yeah. like yourself, mm -hmm. aware of your mental hygiene yeah. and try to do, um, try to filter those noises out. Right. Um, yeah. And also like um, with the usage of social media right now, that's of course cyberbullying. Like I feel mental health, this is a very wide topic. Mm -hmm. that it's not just uh, social media, that's the reason that people have mental health illnesses, but it's a very big, it's a very wide range of topic. But of course, cyberbullying cyber bullying plays a part in it too, with like now social media being so prevalent without much effort, like, you know, people can just reveal each other's secret or like spread false information so quickly online. Yeah. And, you know, the result can be really devastating. And in worst cases of cyberbullying, um, a person's reputation can be destroyed uh, in a matter of hours and then that might just ruin someone's life and yeah. Yeah, I think technology is always evolving mm -hmm. and um, I, don't, I don't think technology is a bad thing and I yeah. don't think a social media platform is a bad thing. It's mm -hmm. just how do we uh, safely incorporate that into our daily right. life and then mm -hmm. use it at a um, 
like、uh, in the right dosage instead of overdoing it. I think、right. we're gradually learning the boundaries now.、Mm. Um, so I think going forward, I think we're is things are still pretty hopeful. Right. I don't. I don't think everyone's going to go into depression because we have social、right. media platform. Yeah, as long as you、yeah. use it for for the good, like to reconnect with people and to you know to feed yourself with some knowledge. But also research found that people who spend teens, they say teens. I want to say people, but I don't know why. Maybe they focus more on teens.、Yeah. But teens who spend five or more hours per day on their devices are seventy one percent more likely to have one risk factor for suicide. And、uh, they also suggest that a great rule. Uh, says that for both teens and adult, it's better to keep their use of social media、uh, less than two hours a day. Then this time you can, you know, put your phone down and like spend the rest of your time for things that are better for your health, like spending time with the family,、uh, going to work out, sleeping,、uh, getting out and exercising. That will give you like endorphins and just a healthier lifestyle. Like you're not gonna spend eight hours a day eating, so you don't spend eight hours a day on your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you have the new iOS? Does it tell you how? Oh yes, I have. I updated to a new iOS, and of course, Apple came out with this screen time to、yeah. help users fight their smartphone addiction syndrome. Yeah. And it's so funny how Apple in the past they, of course, as a smartphone、uh, developer, they try to get people to pick up their phones more and more. Yeah. But this time it's like they're in- introducing this to help people to stop looking at their phone. Right. And. But I mean,、uh, the CEO Tim Cook, he said that they want people at the end of the day to be satisfied with the time they spend with their smartphones、right. and their devices, and they want them to be empowered. They never want people to spend a lot or all of their time on that, you know,、yeah. so that to make people aware about the apps and the amount of time they are putting and how many times they are picking up the phone and who's who's sending them texts and things like that. So、mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we. Apple gives you this fact with screen time,、yeah. and you decide yourself if you want to. Oh, yeah. You know, how do yeah. you want to move on from that? So I think that's a that's a great since everyone around me uses Apple for real. Yeah. So I think、uh-huh. that's a great thing to do. It yeah. Might change your life or. I think it does remind me of how much time I'm spending on my、mm. phone. I never really calculated just because it, it's why、well, would I right? And after I updated my iOS. It、mm-hmm. tells me、uh, for last week it was two hours, and then、mm. this week. But it's kind of annoying, though. Yeah, it's really it's, annoying. I mean, it kind of shocked me. Like,、yeah. uh, like the past week, I spent an average of five hours on my phone.、I'm、like,、mm. oh my god, that's a <laughs> lot of time.、Yes. So、uh-huh. every time I pick up my phone, I would just think about like how I'm spending too much time、mm-hmm. on my phone. So instead of like texting,、uh, maybe do more calls, which is even <laughs> nice to、yeah. like hear people's voice yeah, and all meet face to face, right? Yeah, we're face to face. Yeah. So I th- I think it does reminds me of、uh, how much unnecessary time I'm spending on my phone. So、mm-hmm. that's something that I, I I think I'm I'm hoping to change. Yeah. So actually, we want to end this on a note from a research by the University of Melbourne. They said that most studies examining social media and mental health is not able to determine whether spending more time on social media leads to depression and anxiety. Or if depressed or anxious young people spend more time on social media, the pathways to mental illness are many and varied, as we have discussed. And to suggest that mental health problems can attributed、uh, can be attributed to social media alone would be an oversimplification. So ultimately, you have to decide for yourself how much time you want to spend, and this is you are the only person who can control yourself. So, like, how would you describe your own smartphone addiction? Me and Carol would love to find out. And do you think you're spending more time than you should? And what ways are you using to combat this addiction? You can leave your comments down below in our YouTube channel, or you can come to Twitter and chit chat with us at Hey Castle and Summer C Four. So I guess that's it for today. We will catch you in our next episode. Bye. Bye.